start module 11. It's called Matrices. There is a movie called The Matrix. I wish we could go ahead and watch that. It's really good with Keanu Reeves. Has anybody ever seen it? So matrices are used to organize data. So they look um, like sometimes what we do in a coding class. Uh, make sure all those phones are away. I see a couple phones out. Go ahead and put them away now. This is where we're headed. Guess what, guys? The end is in sight. This is when your summer starts. So right here is your summer starting. We've got um, everything we're going to do for the rest of the year, and we're going to live by our blue sheet. Why? We've got tons of testing coming, right? AP testing, all kinds of stuff. So I want you to be responsible. I want you to use this as your guide. If you're absent, still check. Maybe it's something simple like pressing print on your copier, and you're then caught up because there's a lot of makeups. Right now I can look, and there's probably a third of the kids that I need to go back tomorrow and now ask them if they have the notes. But if they just looked at the blue sheet, they might have been able to do that, even if they were sick. Mom, can you go print this off of line? So just stay on top of it. Um, I don't want to hear excuses. I want to hear, yes, I have it because I knew it. It was on my blue sheet. So just be responsible moving forward. I put a lot of time in, so this is really good. Um, so we had an Albert I.O. that was assigned yesterday. It's due on Monday. So maybe you want to highlight that you have an Albert I.O. due on Monday. And then this is checked because in my other classes, I went through the lesson and then checked. We already learned it. So then these are all your assignments for this week. You can see our next quiz is coming up on Tuesday, May 2nd. That is an AP test. The AP is not affecting everybody. It's affecting some of us. So if you're not here this day, when would you give me the take-home quiz? The next day I see you. So we have, to compute, we have to get a computer day that we can go in and inventory our computers. It's falling on the math department. So our day is the second. Everybody will bring their computers the second. I would just probably put in your brain, bring your computers next week because we have fast testing also on the third. So you need computers for Tuesday and Wednesday. So um, you'll be in um, a classroom, and I have a list for that. We can figure that out later um, of who you're proctoring with. I'm proctoring. It's mostly my second period kids. So you'll bring your computers on the second. We'll go into the media center. We'll get them scanned by Miss Jody, and then you guys will have a take-home quiz that day. You can take it home. You'll attach your homework to the back, and you'll bring it back on Wednesday. What if I don't see you on Wednesday? When would it be due? Thursday. It's just the next day. So if I don't see you for some reason, testing takes too long and fast, I don't see you, we run over, just next day I see you, bring me the take home, okay? It's a take home quiz. It's supposed to be really nice. Also, I schedule nothing on the fast day. So that's a free day. There's nothing new. This is the exact same assignment, okay? And all you're doing is copying notes on the second. So I'm trying to make your workload very, very as light as I can. Um, with us still getting through the content. Then by Thursday, we're kind of back on track. We've gotten past the testing. Will some people be in testing this day? Probably, because they were absent on a Wednesday or whatever. And then I'm going to have a sub day on Friday and Monday. I'm going to Helen, Georgia, if I can get my leg working. So there'll be recorded videos both of these days. This lesson we've already learned. We learned it at the beginning of the year. So it's just repetitive. And it's just to, because it's on the PERT, and a lot of you are taking the PERT for dual enrollment, so I added it back in. I added a day because it's the X, Y systems. And then we go into some hard systems. So this is the only lesson that's really, really challenging. The two Mondays are both kind of hard, but other than that, everything else has been, we've seen it before, we're reviewing. And then I'll come back on Tuesday, help you with everything. Um, this is very short, and then um, we'll have a review in our last test of the 11th. Some of you already know you need a retake, an optional retake, and so that's scheduled for the 12th. Um, that material is already up. If it's test number one or if it's test number two, maybe yesterday's wasn't good, um, you can retake in class on this Friday, and then I'll have after school options going out uh, forward, but I don't know what those days are. I have to coordinate that with my carpool. But this day you can test in class. So I'll probably do like the Monday and Wednesday the following week after school. Um, so I'll let you guys know. So the retake will be somewhere around here. Then we go and do a little trig action. Uh, we got two uh, quizzes at the end. Um, so quiz five and six, and then we're done, okay? Um, we have a review day for this exam, a full day for review. But also these exam days have a review scheduled in. So we'll review right before the exam and on this Friday. So it's a full day and almost two full periods of review for the exam. Don't know how many questions I have to make that. This is our exam schedule. That's when your exam sheet will be due. And then um, if you are exempting, all you need to keep your A is an A one quarter and a B the other. So I was talking to Sasha saying, 
you know, if you have an A for quarter three, all you need is a B for quarter four to have it average to an A if you're exempting. So to exempt, you can't have more than four absences in any class. Are you guys clear about that? So if you hit absence five in period six and all your other classes are four, you can't exempt anything. So if there's a mistake made by a teacher or a sub, make sure you get those corrected um, moving forward into exam. And then my daughter was a little confused at this. She said, one of my classes, I might end up with a C. I can't exempt. You can exempt with a C in world history as long as your math is A's and B's. Does that make sense? So, she, so Mackenzie was thinking if she had a C anywhere, she couldn't exempt anything. You guys understand it's class related for the grade. So if you have an A, one quarter with me, or two B's, you can exempt, okay, as long as you have less than four absences. And you can exempt up to three classes. Now Matt's a senior. He can exempt every single class that he wants as long as he's not AP. And then Matt will have to adjust this because Matt gets to leave before the last two quizzes. Matt, you get out of two quizzes. Woo! senior privilege and so um so matt's last day is i think the 17th if i'm thinking right so um so he'll get out of a little bit of stuff is any other seniors in here it'll be great senior year when it happens to you and you get out a week early okay any questions for me about expectations i just wanted to get that on the video too for anyone that's you know out today they know when things are coming okay major c oh this is the filled in ones we should probably fill it in together i have i know a teacher that does that they just put up the answers and they reveal it they don't do it with them i don't like that i like to I have six copies by the end of the day. Okay, a matrix. A matrix is a way to organize your data. I find the first section very kind of boring. It's just, um, we're gonna, just gonna organize it however they want us to organize it. But it's a really good application as we move forward. Then we're gonna be just looking at the numbers and adding them, subtracting them, multiplying, dividing them, all kinds of stuff like that. So a matrix is labeled, it has dimensions, and the dimensions are always labeled by going rows, times, columns. So they're gonna ask us the dimension of the matrix and we're gonna call it a four by three matrix or a five by seven matrix, something like that. And the way we label it is always the rows comes first and the columns come second. So when we go ahead and look at this example here, we have these cities. These are the five most populated cities. Don't look. What do you think one of the most populated cities is? Just name one. Santa Fe, what else? New York, what else? I would have guessed Boston because I'm from there and it's, whoa, it's horrible driving up there. I would have guessed New York. Anything else? Chicago? You got a couple of them. Okay, so these are the five most um, populated cities. That is, none of them would I ever want to live in. And <laughs> Clearwater might be up there soon enough because I feel like we're really populated. But anyways, these are the most populated cities. Um, Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, New, New York City, and Philadelphia. You'd never see me living in any of those because I would not, I'm not a city girl. My middle kid wants to live in a walkable city someday, so that would one of these would be great. So use a matrix to organize the data. We're gonna organize it, but specifically going greatest to least, looking only at the monthly income. So let's put our eyes in the right spot. We're not looking at the population to organize. We're not looking at the median income. We're not looking at the household side. What are we looking at? The rent. The monthly rent, you're right. No, more specifically the monthly rent. So we're looking at these values to organize, which one would have to go first if I want it greatest to least? New York, oh, it's expensive to live in New York, very good. So for New York, the population is 8.3, the income is $60,762, that is the median income. Median means if I took everybody's income and lined it up, the very middle number would be 60,763. The household side, you can't have 2.62 of a person, but you got somewhere around most of their houses have about two to three people in it. And the rent is high, 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 $13.96. And it doesn't tell us if that's a two or three bedroom um, or one bedroom or a closet. So I lived in a closet once for a little bit when I got kicked out of the house as a senior, but I lived in a friend's closet. It was like a, a big closet, <laughs> but um, until I got on my feet. But anyways, this is how you make a matrix. You go ahead and you put two brackets and you just list the numbers, no commas in between. We're starting to make the matrix now. That is the first highest monthly rent. What's the second highest? Los Angeles. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna list Los Angeles's values now. Their population is four million. Their um, median income is $58,385,000. How many people are living in their household? 2.82. Their monthly rent, 
and this is median, so this is the middle. Obviously, a lot of people are paying a lot more than that, $13.76. We're going to continue on making this matrix -y. This is the way we're organizing our data. Is there any questions so far? Okay, let's get Chicago next. Why is Chicago next? Because it's the next highest. If you look, it's 1,077. And so it's a little redundant in my, in my case. When you go to numbers like 9 and 10 in the homework, I like those. You're looking at labels and making a matrix of the labels. This one, I could kind of look at their, their little signs here and probably pull out the information just as quickly. Philadelphia is the next highest. So if we look, Philadelphia, it would be roughly for a median $1,007. And then their population is 1.6. This is their monthly income. And then their household size. And then let's do Houston because Houston is got the lowest rent. I might just have to extend that. I need to make up a lot of room. 2.3, 51,104, 2.67 and 990. And I'll give everybody a second to get there, and then we'll go ahead and talk about this beautiful matrix we made. Now when we move forward to the next two or three sections, they're all just going to be numbers. We're not going to be doing word problems all week long. Now when we look at this, what, is, what are the dimensions? Well, I have to go rows by columns. So I think a lot of people know what a row is because we make spreadsheets and we use Excel and stuff. These are your rows. So your rows are going straight across and your columns are going straight down vertically. So what would we call the dimensions of this matrix? How many rows do I have? Five. So the rows would be five and that always has to come first. If I'm talking to other math people, we need to be consistent and put it in the in the right form. So we always count the rows. So there's one, two, three, four, five rows by how many columns? By four. Good. One, two, three, four. So if I said, what are the dimensions of this matrix, which will be a question on your take-home quiz, you would tell me it's a five by four matrix because it's five rows by four columns. Is the new vocabulary part of it make seem okay? Okay, cool. And so now what you got to do, I've never taught matrices. It's kind of fun. I, I did them in college. I just never have taught them. I forget what class they were in. So now we're going to just find the value, and it's just kind of small, so I'll write it a little bigger, of A24. So A24 or A24, if you didn't know how to read it, A24 is just saying, let's look at a certain, they call it element in the matrix. And so we're going to go to row two and column. Anybody want to guess? Four, and we're going to pull out what number is represented there. So we're going to go down two rows and over four. It's like reading a table. And so down two rows over four, what number is in that spot? 1,376. Nice job. 1,376. And then they say, what does that represent? That does not need to be your life story in a paragraph. Just what does that number represent as far as our data is concerned? It's the Los Angeles, very good. Should probably use the word median, but rent. So if we took all of the rents in Los Angeles and lined them up, the very middle value, median is the middle line that you drive, you know, your car and the median divides the road in half. Uh, so median means the middle number. So people will be paying more and people will be paying less, but the guy in the middle is paying $1,376. How do you feel? Okay, let's go ahead and look at a couple more of the elements of this matrix. So if we now just go ahead and do a little U try, you can go a step ahead of me if you want, and then I'll just call on somebody. Let's go ahead and see what element four, three is. So element A, four, three. So that's going to be row four, column three. And Nicole, what number corresponds to row four, column three? So go down four and, yeah, what's the number? Yeah, 2.57 is perfect, good. And then um, go ahead, Thomas, what does that mean? 2.57? Good, 
good. So it's the household side, size in Philadelphia. Are there any questions about how we're reading this matrice? Okay, we've got one more to do. Um, and so if we go on over to A12, Audrey, what value would be A12? It would be row one and column two. Yeah. Yeah, good. If you got the workload that I knew you were in the right spot. So $60,762. And then, Brady, what is that representing? Yeah, and so we just say that's the median, that's the middle number income um, in New York City. So how do you guys feel? Is there anything that's confusing you along the way before we go on to doing a couple more of these? We'll do one more that kind of falls under this example one, and then example two is going to be finding some averages and some just more analyzing data. We're just trying to understand these matrices today. Then tomorrow we lose all the words, yay, and we just do some solving. We go all numbers. If you need to step out at any point, too, you know you can, right? Okay, cool. Um, I wish I could step out at any point. Um, okay, so, um, but yeah, if you need anything faster, we'll hit you. Um, does anybody need anything else from this page? Okay. Okay, let's go on over to the next page. This one is not in your notes, so if you didn't copy uh, in your books, so if you did not copy notes this morning, then you can just listen and participate along, um, maybe on a separate piece of paper. And um, it's just as an extra example that they give me. So we're going to go ahead and look at transportation. So we're going to look at the transportation at a school. And this school is North Lawn High School. I don't know if that's a real school or made up. And we're going to go ahead and look, and they give us another table. I don't really like when they give me a table. I like when they give me information and then I have to kind of develop my own matrix. So we're going to develop our own matrix here. I feel like it's too easy from the table. So we'll go ahead and we'll make two brackets to start to set this up. And then we're going to list all of that data. Do you need someone to go with you or are you good? You're good? Okay. So it'll be 63, 46, 52, and 40. 162, 138, 98, and 92. These are our people walking and riding the bus, uh, walking and biking, and these are our people riding the bus, and these are our totals. If you look, the totals don't actually add up to the two prior numbers, so there's some other way people are getting to school. I don't know, maybe they're taking a scooter, or I don't know, <laughs> their parents are driving them. So if you look, if you add 63 and 162, they don't add to 278. So these are our walkers and bike riders, and these are our bus people, and what is this? Our total students. So if I don't put those, those labels on there, the data's not going to make too much sense to me. So with the word problems, we really, get to, we really get to see how that's organizing that data. Is there any questions about what I've done so far? I still don't know how many are from each grade, so I got to label also my rows as freshmen. So these are the freshmen. These are the sophomores, juniors, and the seniors. Okay. And now we'll look at this and we'll get the dimension. Um, Olivia, what do you think the dimension of this matrix is? Dimension of the matrix. Yeah, very good. So it's rows by columns. Great listening. So it would be one, two, three, four rows by one, two, three columns. And that'll be a point on the next quiz. You can't get any nicer than that. And so we'll go ahead and know, you just have to know the rows goes first, right? And now we'll look at a specific element, and our specific element will be A13. And so, Aiden, what number corresponds to A13? Uh, 278 is correct. So the way he read that is he went to row 1 and column 3. And so row 1 was his freshman. And then he went over to column 3, 1, one 2, 3, and he got 278. And then, Josh, what does the 278 represent? Total of what? Yeah, the total of the freshmen. And Richie in last class was great. He said, is it the total um, that are walking, um, riding a bike, and on a bus? And I said, nope. 
So the, we could total those two up and figure out how many people are walking, biking, and busing. But there's some discrepancies there. So probably some people are getting dropped off by their parents or, I don't know, riding a scooter or, I don't know, skateboard or something. That's all we've got for example number one. How does everybody feel so far? Good. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and analyze one. It doesn't get any harder really than this. Um, so if you guys like this so far, um, we're, we, tomorrow's is a little different. We're going to be solving. Also not really horrible. Um, so I feel like this whole week is kind of nice to make this week. The hard one is Monday. So just come in kind of rested on Monday. Um, and it's not too hard. It's just a process. It's almost like when we learn to distribute for the first time. We're going to be multiplying this whole week. I'm going to push up a little. Is everybody okay? Okay, let's go to example two. I got some head nods. Yay. Okay, not egg nods, head nods. This is the end of our notes. This is the assignment. It will stay the same, so nothing's changed. I have a beautiful key. I sat down and watched Outlander last night. Does anybody watch that? The guy in is really hot, so I'm like, you know, I'm like in love with him. So, but anyways, <laughs> so there's a new episode of Outlander out. So I went and watched that about an hour, and I did all three homeworks for this week in that time. So it wasn't that long. There probably are some in here that are weird, but. Okay, so now we're gonna have citrus grown. And so when we look at citrus, um, all the citrus grown is grown in four states primarily. We wouldn't have, we probably would have guessed Florida. So our citrus is grown in Florida. I would have guessed California, but Arizona and Texas, I don't think I would have guessed. I probably would have guessed Georgia for the peaches or something. So, so these are the four main states that um, are going to go ahead and grow the majority of our citrus fruits, like oranges and lemons and limes and citrusy stuff. Um, we have a nice table there, and now we're going to organize it as a matrix. Again, they're not telling me how to organize it, so I just use it in its totality of what it looks like when I look at the table. So if you want to go ahead and start setting that up now, the other thing I'd ask is if everybody can make sure they have a calculator, we're going to be adding these numbers and rows together, and I'm going to ask you guys to help me in a little bit just so it goes faster. So in 2015 to 2016, so you could say 2015 to 2016, Arizona produced $59 million in citrus crops. California, $247.5 million in citrus crops. 1,248.4 million and 80.7. So in that year of 2015 and 2016, uh, we went ahead and we had those millions of dollars of um, uh, in, you know, uh, citrus crops being sold. So now if we go ahead and look at 2016 to 2017, we can see that Arizona went a little bit smaller in their sales whereas California went ahead and had a bigger sales year, and so on, and so on. Any questions? If you're like, this is a lot to write, by the time I'm done with my day, I'll have written all of this data seven times. This is why maybe some teachers just cover it up <laughs> and don't write it. This doesn't tell me much until I tell me what, until I write down the states. So I need to know the states that correspond. So there'll always be a labeling with the word problems. And then we'll just crunch numbers. Hi, what's up? Yeah, yeah. I'll let you know one year it rained through my ceiling in here. And so I, I think it's a drain pipe or something, right? That's up on the top. I wonder if I didn't get hit this time because maybe all the water went into the bathroom somehow. Because I was safe. <laughs> I was safe. I, I was the only one right there, and then both of the people on the other side of me got flooded. Yeah, I am video recording, so it's, they won't see your faces or anything, but just if you say anything, you know, it's on the video. I just want to let you know. Yeah, so you can say hi. Hey. Hey, study your math. <laughs> but yeah, come on in, whatever you're going to do. Yeah. And then we'll go ahead and write California here, Florida, whatever you guys need to do, and then Texas. You can move around my space, whatever you need to do. I didn't notice any wetness any over here, though. We were good. Okay, now what we'll do is I'll give you guys a little task to do as we've got all the guys in here. 
Um, we're now going to add up all of the rows and all of the columns. No, you're fine. You're fine. You need to have the five inside. Yeah, we have CSR. Not this time, no. But years ago, it came in right over here. So I don't know if I would check those the roots. I don't know. I didn't hear. Nothing came through to me this time. But yeah, there was one year, it was maybe about six years ago, and it was it was like rained on my desk. It was right here, so it was very centrally geared. So I don't know if that helps at all. Yeah, I know you guys are probably trying to find where the leak is. My dad owned a roofing company. What am I <laughs> for documenting? I know, I know. What am I saying? Oh my gosh, I gotta watch what I say. Okay, um, Aaliyah and um, Amaria and Thomas, can you guys um, add up the row of Arizona? So add straight across. Um, Olivia and Yaklin, will you guys get California for me? So the row going across. Jack and Brady and Nicole, can you guys add up Florida going across? So you're going to add up the rows. Josh and Aiden and um, Natalie, will you guys add up Texas's row? Amanda and Maddie, will you do the first column? Um, oh, Jama, you're kind of by yourself. Jama and um, Michelle, why don't you do the second column? And Audrey and Johanna, can you do the third column? Just because I did all of them, and boy, it took me a long time. So does anybody want to do all of them, Olivia? Heck no, no, do we? <laughs> okay, so when you guys got it, just check with the person at your table. Does anybody have one of the columns or rows already? Okay, what did you guys get? So we're adding up all of the rows and columns. Very good, Olivia, good. Did you already get yours, Olivia? What did you guys get? 138.9, and we're just doing it as a group because it goes faster. And you guys had Texas, right, Josh? Uh, yeah. What did you have? Good. Do you see how this is a nice take-home quiz? You can check with the people next to you. Nobody wants to be off by, like, 0.8 or something. Go ahead, um, uh, Jack. Beautiful. And then, um, Audrey, did you guys have the last one? Yeah, good. And then Michelle's group. Um, I did not get that. What'd you get? What'd you get? Jim? I got 30. Yeah, you, you're off by like 50. I don't know where. Uh, that's okay. You just said the wrong number. Okay. And last but not least, Maddie. Good. Woo. Okay, good. We can cheat off of all of each other now. Um, somebody asked me to go a little bit bigger at this point. And then we've got all of our values. Okay, so now why did we add those all up? Now if we looked at the first column, we could see that the um, with the um, millions of dollars in crops were sold in 15, uh, 16 between all four states. This would be between all four states. We could see what year did we make the most money or have the most millions in crops, and it would be that middle year. So you can look at the data going down. And so if you look at the growing season of 2015 to 2016, you had 3,435.6 million, and the next year you had 3,532.2 million, and in the last season you had 3,283 million, okay? We've got one more thing to do, and this is what they'll do in the homework, and it's the last part. They want you to find the average. So you can see right now, and if you look, Arizona had some different years, right? One year they sold 59 million and the other was 34.2. So if we add up all three of those um, data points, we can get the totals that my friends got me across the way. What could I do to find the average? What does average mean I'm gonna do to this total? I'm gonna divide it by three. So if I add up all three of these, this is how your test grades are figured. I add up your three test grades and I divide by three and that's the average that you see in focus. Right now we've only had two tests so we have more coming. But this would be our three years that we're looking at and we wanna know the average. So we'll go ahead and get, um, Amanda will you get me the first one and then Brady will you get me the second one? If somebody at those tables wanna help them too. What was the average for Arizona's average of sales over the whole three years? 46.3, and remember that's million dollars, what we'd like to say our bank accounts are at. How about California? 2,235 point, is it seven or eight? Eight, nice job. 
So California had a lot of citrus crop sales. Very good. Looks like they're the biggest so far. We'll have to see. How about Florida? Did anybody do Florida yet? 1,045.6, good. And how about Texas? Eighty-nine point three, good. So you can see now, if we were comparing, I mean, maybe we don't just want to look at one of the years because there is a big fluctuation if you look in those data. But we want to look at the average of the three years and then compare and say, wow, California's kicking butt, then Florida, then Texas and Arizona out of the four has the smallest amount of crop sales for citrus. So that's how we can compare it. Does that make sense? Are there any questions for me? Okay, the homework starts a little like, oh my gosh, I'm writing down all these values, this total is thing. Um, so the first three are going to take a little time, kind of like our notes did, um, but you're setting up those and that's what I'll have you do. So that will be part of your take home quiz on Tuesday. And then when you hit number six, it's like, really, this is all you want me to do is the dimensions? Yes, that's all I want you to do is the dimensions. So the first couple, you're going to have to make some matrices. And then you go ahead and you flip the page and it's like, Hallelujah. All they're asking is the dimension and for one of the values. So this is going to take you seriously less than a minute for all three. And then this is what I like. I love that they went ahead and gave it to me in a different format. Like if I could cut and paste that in, I would. Go ahead, Josh. No, they're already kind of rounded for you. So make leave it at 4.3. Well, no, not like that. Oh. Yeah, I went to the hundredths so I could compare them. Really good question. And I'll put that up. Yeah, if I went to just like the tenths, then I couldn't compare them as easily. Yeah, so I went to a, a, a rounding that would be helpful. There's also going to be a part C that says to explain. You don't have to really explain. It can be a yes or no. I just didn't want to cut it. So it's going to say, like, would you add these up and find the average? Would it be helpful? And there's a lot of times it's not helpful. So, Okay, that's the end of today's video. We'll go ahead and start homework now. Don't just copy it, though. Really try to make these because you want to be able to be part of that.